Okay, okay recording of part two. Go on. Guns. It is a semantic argument. Only if you don't know what a metaphor, an analogy, or a thought experiment is, or what the word semantic means, or straw man the What was that? Oh, I just want to point out that the flying spaghetti monster is not a thought experiment. Yeah, you actually, oh, wait, it's uh, not, it, it wasn't supposed to be that you take it seriously. What yeah. the, what is it it mean? It's, it's, it's a thought experiment if you have a level of intelligence lower than the ankle socks of a particularly small beetle. And even though, wait, 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 no, 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 but e e even, the, e even the lay people that popularize this, they do it to mock religion because they think the idea, the ideas of religion are stupid. That's why they use the flying spaghetti monster. A lot of anti theists love using this. Exactly. It's not, exactly. it's just supposed to be a that's serious just, argument. Let's mm -hmm. just keep it at that. It's, it's just, uh, he says we don't, uh, or specifically Jacob doesn't understand the meaning of, of the quote-unquote argument, but... It seems that he's just simply ignorant of what it actually is. Well, he seems like he's projecting, it seems like he's ignorant of it, and well, obviously projecting onto Jacob. Uh, <laughs> exactly, he's, he's appealing to his own authority as if he knows something that Jacob doesn't, which obviously uh, is, is just <coughs> false. Uh, okay, I think we should move on. I think we should move on. Yeah, we've given this too much time. Alright, let's move Continue. To the point where it is a semantic argument, like you did. Because if you're... One other thing I want to point out. The flying spaghetti monster is a parody. It's, uh, somewhat using parody, but a parody nonetheless. No, it isn't. The flying spaghetti monster is called satire. It's a sarcastic sort of metaphor for political parodies. It is not a parody. It is fault. What was that? Satire is parody. Parody is interchangeable with satire. Satire is the highest literary expression of the comedy. So, parody is the type of satire. So, what parody is where you take an exaggerated form of something to satirize it. What I was saying, what I was saying to Jacob last night about this, we were talking about that, is that, um, I mean, you, 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 this guy doesn't know the difference between a satire and a parody. I mean, you, you look at um, a Mel Brooks' movie, you know, it's mo it's most certainly uh, satire, but it's satire done as parody. Hmm. I mean, good lord. You can, use, basically, you can use parody to satirize, like how um, Stuart Lee's, uh, um, oh, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I'm tongue tied. How Stuart Lee takes uh, an exaggerated form of the rhetoric and implied values of Top Gear to satirise the rhetoric and implied values of Top Gear. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, so you use parity as a tool to satirise. Uh, uh, that's... Alright, um, anyone want to make one last statement before we move on? <laughs> it's a shame to have to... Have to have... Okay, I've, I've said it well, say. Yeah, I'd like to just simply mention that um, it seems to me, at least, uh, Completely, uh, oh, I'm completely convinced that he absolutely has no idea what the role of the uh, spaghetti monster argument, satire, comedy, uh, all the uh, things that he calls it, is actually what the role actually is in, in this whole discussion because he changes it from one thing to the other. Is he saying that his argument is a parody? Is he saying that his argument is an analogy? Is he saying that his argument is a satire? What, what is it? Very good point, Aaron. I completely agree. The thing is, he doesn't, seem to, he doesn't seem to know what his own argument is. He seems to be, you know, just at a loss of what he's actually saying. <laughs> Uh, as we say in the South, he's a bit uh, full of piss and vinegar, and he seems like a bit like he's too over eager to combat the evils of religion. <laughs> I like vinegar. All right, we're gonna continue then, because I think we said enough on this part. Yeah. What experiment? Now, the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster is parodying religious organizations, which in 
itself is political satire. You don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't answer any part of the universe. It's not supposed to. That's not what that argument's for. Let me give you let me give you some understanding of what we are claiming God what God is. Please we are claiming that that higher intelligence a higher intelligent agent creating every universe all the way to our our solar systems to the earth. That is what we're claiming that God is. That is what we call God by the end of the day. When you're trying to compare God to the one spaghetti monster, you are made, you are playing a semantic game. Because what you are what we are calling God, you're calling Santa and the flying spaghetti monster. No. Who you are claiming is God, we are claiming is the flying spaghetti monster. You're not claiming a general God. You're claiming Yahweh Elohim. That is not a general God. That is a specific God. Jehovah, Yahweh Elohim, I am that I am. Whatever you want to call him, you're claiming that God. That is who the flying spaghetti monster are against. Stop it. Can I say something? Yeah. What is, what is he, what is, where is he getting that from? Where is he getting the the whole deal about, you know, pretty much... Uh, uh, it seems to me like he's just assuming that you, Jacob, were talking about, you know, the Judeo-Christian God rather than just a generalized uh, uh, concept of God. You see, oh, the thing is... Wait, go ahead. Even if we, even if we were, just... Even if, even if someone did argue, uh, claim that these arguments proved the uh, Judeo-Christian God... That wouldn't. That would still make the flying spaghetti monster would still be an invalid analogy, because it doesn't meet. <laughs> because it's not timeless or exists outside. I mean, uh, if you wanted to, uh, I'm just just annoyed about how he doesn't seem to realise that. Yeah, yeah, we seem we seem to be repeating the same. I think we're repeating the criticism in here because I think we went over this already. Okay. All right. My bad. It's all right. Uh, I think we should move on. Then. Yes. If you want to say that God, if you want to say that God didn't create the universe, and say that the flying spaghetti monster or Santa created the universe, you need to demonstrate that by philosophical proofs. This is where now I would rec- I would recommend a blog, a, a podcast by Jimmy Beacon that does a very good job of boiling this really ridiculous argument. To its really absurd, absurd notion. I don't agree with him in terms of the legality of teaching intelligent design, but in terms of his point about the flying spaghetti monster, I think it's a valid point. Well, since I agree that if the argument did say what you say it's saying, it would be wrong. I'm going to go ahead and pass. Can I? Can I just? Oh, say what, 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 what was that? What was that? I love. That was me, that was me, uh, Philo. I just wanted to, to say something which which might uh, be repeated at the end of this session anyway. Um, is that he, he wants to, uh, as I mentioned before, he seems to want to continue the argument, but it, it's, it's quite pointless, as most of you theists, uh, and maybe even atheists here would agree with me, to continue uh, onto the fine points of theology or attributes of God if one doesn't even accept that there is a God. And simply saying, you know, I agree, let's, let's move on, there is a God, but still maintaining the uh, idea of there is no God while in the argument saying, okay, I grant you that, is not going to get you anywhere because you're not, you don't have in that position and understand the uh, continuation of the argument because in your mind you still that God doesn't exist that God doesn't exist so it's quite pointless you see what I'm trying to say uh, exactly actually I want to one other did he just say that he was going to actually avoid watching the podcast he never said anything about it he simply oh, said I'll pass no he meant this point well, if there's no objections, then in fact, were he not to listen to arguments against his own? I mean, if that podcast offered a valid, made valid, 
arguments, then why not listen to it? Like, yeah, it's only an hour long, so... Yeah, it seems like they, uh, reluctance from him actually... Maybe he just thought this too. <laughs> no, I think he meant pass as in this point. He, he was passing just that uh, okay. point and was moving on in the video. Okay. Yeah. That's what that's what I got from it. Okay. Well, it kind of gives some people the impression that he wasn't going to listen to it in the first place. He's, okay, I don't well. know. So that that might be a, the impression. That was just, I'd say that was implied, but in, not not directly though. It's it's a bit ambiguous. Okay. Well, that's something although, that 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 you can I'd ask him. That, and something right, implicit versus explicit. Yeah. We don't want to put we don't want to put words in his mouth. Yes. Right. Something like that. He can clarify later or after you watch yeah. this recording. So let's just move on. The mystery represented Alright. Can we continue now? That summarizes how I feel about the whole comparison thing. Why are you always so Pacific? Why can't you be Mediterranean or even Caribbean? Simply saying that this is not a mere matter of speculation, that there's more than a tiny bit of evidence on but, the table. But is he saying this for what? Evidence for a beginning of the universe. Yes, yeah, so we know that. that. Nobody oh, well, that's what I'm offering in this first argument. Yes, the evidence. But the boy, the beginning no does imply a goal. It does if the first premise is true that whatever begins to exist has a cause. It logically follows. Yeah, that but, therefore, but, but the cause hasn't got to be God. Well, remember, I gave a, a, an argument for thinking that this cause is timeless, spaceless, yeah, immaterial, uh, enormously powerful, and personal. I think it's the computer. Well, that was just computers are designed by people. I no, no, this is a self-designing computer. Uh -huh. Timeless. Timeless. Well, that's a contradiction in terms. Why is it timeless? What's contradictory about it? A, a computer has to function. It takes Oh, no, it's a special computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it has to be logically coherent. Oh, it's logically coherent? Yes, you have to be logically coherent. Oh, no, this and, and besides, is amazing. No, it, it, besides, it, it would have to be, as I said, a personal being. No. And, a computer is a physical... Not this computer. Oh, oh no. Okay, see, what you're doing is you're actually... What you're calling a computer is really God. A, a, a non-physical, non... It's just, it's just another word if you rob it of all the attributes that make it a computer. So, hold on a second. I got... I got at Mike just came on, Cartesian Theus, I'm going to add to the call, okay? Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Hey, real quick. He just came on. Greetings. Oh, no. Greetings, sir. Greetings. Hi, Mike. Hey, Greetings. Salutations. Hey. Greetings and salutations. Hello there. Uh, this is actually being recorded right now. Um, will you introduce yourself since you just joined the call? This is being recorded. I take it that means me. Yes. Hello, Mike, aka Cartesian Fist. Okay then. And as I mentioned in part part one, I will put the <coughs> this person's YouTube channel into the description box. We already went, oh Mike, just to give you a quick recap, we already went through about um, twelve, almost twelve minutes of his, of his first video. So we already covered most of his points in the in, in that part of the video. So okay, so oh, the devastated. Burger analogy has been dealt with then. Yes. We didn't really go over that one. <laughs> How much more have we got? Yes. Alright. Devastating burger analogy, I like that. <laughs> How much more of the video have we got? Because <laughs> right. oh, we, okay. we just went over um, that Mike, the, the William Lane Craig, Craig clip. Uh, yeah, I mentioned that actually before you actually played it. <laughs> I think we should continue then. Yes. All right, let's continue. Say what you want about William Lane Craig. He's a moronic, disingenuous fucking dipshit. <laughs> you can say I that. agree. <laughs> Do not have an argument make. 
is by cheap shot you mean not a shot at all, cheered on by people who are literally fucking alive. Then yeah, it's a cheap shot. But he's right. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Stop. I, I feel insulted because um, he, he, he calls William Lane Craig here um, a moronic whatever he said um, and that people who find his argumentation convincing are equally as, as stupid and just keep it so it's kind of a genetic fallacy it's, it's not even the fact that he made poor arguments it's you know it's William Lane Craig and the people that agree with him are moronic dipshits now, that, that's now, not I, fair now, now this is something that that uh, that I, I had to come across because I happen to be a, a bit of a fan of William Lane Craig uh, after listening to a lot yeah. of his uh, debates and, 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 and his uh, pr- uh, presentation. <laughs> and I've noticed that among many atheists, not all of them, but many of them, they they try they sit there, you know, bad mouthing William Lane Craig. But all I've heard is just character assassinations and attacks. And yes, I know this discussion is not about William Lane Craig. I'm just saying this guy's following the same type of rhetoric. Call exactly. it. He wants, and never give any proof. he wants to claim he that he is rational, then he has to give us, uh, at least, at the very least, give us a refutation of any of the points made uh, by William Lane Craig or any of uh, the people that uh, support his form of argumentation. But that's a discussion for yeah. If you yeah, claim that he's a moronic dimension, the owners of evidence is kind of on you to demonstrate that, and he didn't yeah. really do that. He just I, 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 I would like to, to just interject that if Craig's arguments are wrong, then they're wrong. If they're right, then they're right. And it doesn't it, that doesn't make you a dipshit if you're wrong. It, it just means you're wrong. So go ahead and do that. There's no need for insult. Is, I, I mean, it's, it's just, just bad thing. I think. Yeah. Hold on. Let me make a quick comment. I think if I don't think it's always it's not a good idea to resort to insult. Because if you're going to result to doing insult, it kind of gives the audience the impression that you you, you run into a corner in a d- discussion or a debate. Well, not, not always. I mean, uh, not always, of course. But you said you didn't find it convincing. Um, it's a show of um, I would I would think uh, play yard bullying. Uh, people are afraid of you and uh, think highly of you because you dare to make fun of this uh, this person, but. It seems that uh, the whole start of this this episode with with Espen started when he said that atheists have the domain of of rationality, and what what he actually means with that is is completely um, I'm completely ignorant on the fact. But he uh, he doesn't even I, I have not heard any sound or even a good argument. Well, that's the same thing. I mean, I have not seen an argument from him uh, at all, really. No. I actually brought up the argument to him in the comments it section of uh, any one of his videos. Uh, it's like, uh, if two atheists fight amongst each other and the atheists have the moral high ground, you know, if they're fighting amongst themselves, then who has the moral high ground in that case? For example, this whole race issue that came up with Hey Ruka and everybody else. Between me and who, hey Ruka, who has the moral or the uh, intellectual high ground? And uh, he was like, "Well, it's the person that's not the racist who's using reason and logic." And I was like, "Yeah, but she's also using her reason and logic. It's flawed, but you don't really address that. You just say that it's because of her position that she's wrong, not why she holds that that position." He says he goes, to, he, he addresses that in part three, but we'll discuss that later. So. All right. Well, he, he just seems to be using insults and name-calling in lieu of content and wit. I think we just spent too much time on this, and it, if, if we want to actually, and if he wants to discuss this, we should leave it for another video. Let's move Let's move on from this part, because I think we spent a little too much time on this part. I just point out yes. that atoms are not acceptable substitutes yeah. for actual yeah. arguments. Yeah. Let's move on. This is we're taking too much time here. Be hundred percent right. There. No, he isn't. If you're going to compare God to, like, say, Santa Claus or the blind spaghetti monster, okay. Pause it for a moment. You're going to What's that? Pause it. All right. He he did a cut a cut in when you said 
that Liam Lecrae was 100, 100% right. He did a cut in saying, no, he's not, and then cut back to your video. That's I, a fair assertion. That proves the okay. previous point that we made. Yes. And this is another, yes, that he this should. Is yet another problem I have. This is, this is yet another problem I have uh, with S. Flynn. This is, it's something that's prevalent throughout all of his videos. He makes these assertions, pretty much just, I'm right, you're wrong assertions, and just moves on. Doesn't ever explain how or why he's right. Well, I mean, to, well, well, hold on. To be fair, he did say last night he doesn't claim that he's always right. He's not claiming that he's right about a specific position. He's just saying that he's just saying that this argument's wrong, 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 and all this stuff. But I get what you're saying. Like he's just making. He's, it's just like, a that, him in, like in the assertion that you know William Lane Craig is not a hundred percent right in that video because I doubt the Kalam cosmological argument. That's like another. But again, we don't want to go into that. We're not. We weren't even discussing the Kalam in that video. Yeah. I would say that it's just assertion fallacy to, to assert these things as if they're brute facts. That, and I mean, I, as if we, as if, as if others agree with them. I'm sure there are, are are people that agree with them, but there are people that don't agree with them. So don't assert this as if it's a brute fact that we all have to bow down to. Are you mm-hmm. kidding me? All right, I think we should move on. Yes. <laughs> and, pr- and pretty much deriving the meaning behind the word God and the meaning behind the word blind spaghetti monster. <sighs> The point of the argument is actually the point you're making. It's to show you that all you have is that it is timeless and that um, it needs to be powerful enough to create the universe. That is all. That is why I do not take comparisons of God, of say Santa or the blind spaghetti monster or the tooth fairy. I consider it intellectual laziness. The reason you do not take comparisons of God to the uh, flying spaghetti monster is not because we are intellectually lazy. It's because you are intellectually unsophisticated. Okay, now, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. For, for first of all, um, Thunderbolt, uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think you were saying that we, quote unquote, for his definition of, I guess, all of atheism. No. That, that, that you were in any way saying that we were intellectually lazy, no. but rather yeah. that you were specifically saying that he was being intellectually lazy yes. by arguing from a flawed comparison. Yes, that's my point. So, all right. I'm not saying all atheists use this argument or that all atheists are intellectually lazy. In fact, right. there, are many, there are many atheists who are intellectually sophisticated, so... Right. Yes. And, you know, there's also plenty of atheists that are, in fact, intellectually lazy. Perfect example, hey, Ruka. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to lock up sources. Look it up yourself. I'm not your research tool. <laughs> right. Because he just yeah. made a fair search in there, just accused me of being intellectually on the edge of substantiating that. Yeah, that that's, that's not the first insult that, that he made in this, this um, whole thing, but... All right. Um, I think we should move on then. Please yes. seriously want to argue that it wasn't a higher intelligence that we call God that created the universe, but was instead either a guy in a red suit or a big giant blank spaghetti monster that created the universe? You have to demonstrate that's the case, and, and that wasn't a God that created the universe, but instead was either Santa Claus or the blank spaghetti monster. Good luck. I will admit right there that was a rhetorical joke, and so, but you did take it. To, hold on, let me continue. Uh, you don't actually believe in a flying spaghetti monster, hence satire or thought experiment. If you want to go back to the first one, we don't have to show shit. You have to show. Why this all-powerful entity that created the universe is specifically Yahweh Elohim. That is the point. Your arguments at best get you to deism. 
Judaism. You're using special thinking to jump the gap from deism to veganism. Oh, thing is that we can use special pleading to Wait. jump the gap from deism. Wait, what was that? Oh, I just moaned and said, oh no. All right, we're going yeah, around. Let's see something I got to say about this. This is Matt Sackler. This part, this video, this part, this part two is almost over, so we're almost done with this one. So, so uh, which we are granting you out of debate courtesy to flying spaghetti monster, just as you seem to not have the capacity to show that Yahweh Elohim is the God that created everything. We don't have the capacity or the desire to show that the flying spaghetti monster is the creator of the universe. Until you show us evidence for your specific magical fairy tale monster creature capricious thing, we're not going to show you ours. So get to work on that, and um, good luck with that. Okay, well, that's the end of this video. So we're going to move on to part three. Actually, <laughs> let's see. Just to make a comment on that, I can't say. What was it? Wow. Someone's bringing the rhythm. Hold on. Yeah, everybody's going through Jacob as a loop. Wait, what's going on? Yeah, turn down your mic sensitivity Hold on. a bit. Let me stop my recording real quick, okay? All right. I, I was just going to make just a, a comment about that, but just this, uh, just using connotatively negative language that your fairy monster thing, that's just an appeal, that's just a subtle appeal to ridicule when you do that. It's like calling Jesus a zombie. It doesn't get us anywhere. Right. Why add that in? It's just a kind well, of... It's a just a random connection of words strung together in a, in a way that makes no sense, oh, other than to... It's just... Well, yeah, it's basically what you're saying. It's appeal to uh, uh, emotion, maybe critical. It's also an ad hominem in that it doesn't address the uh, well, what's being argued at all. Right. Actually, if I might, if I, if I might make a particular statement, first of all, I hate when he uses the phrase Yahweh Elohim because I think those are two different names. They are. Uh, um, they are. <coughs> and, and second, when he compares. Uh, when, when he uh, says that arguments for the existence of a general theistic idea of God are the same as the ones that demonstrate the Christian God to be true, he's doing exactly what a creationist does when they compare abiogenesis to evolution. Sure, they're related under the, the branch of biology, but they're not the same theory. Those are two different fields, all, or subfields, I should say, altogether. Likewise, with the arguments for the existence of a general theistic idea of God and that it's the Christian God, those are two completely different sets of arguments. And as yeah. an atheist, you know, I may not agree with those arguments, but if you're going to combat your opponents, you know, in the name of anything, don't make shit up about your opponents and don't just assume things about your opponents. Right. I, I constantly fight that on YouTube. The fact that the general arguments we're discussing fall under the uh, penumbra of um, natural theology, where specific arguments for, say, Christianity falls under the uh, category of, say, like, revealed theology, I think. <laughs> I think that's the, the, that's the term that uh, when he uses something. Right. When you do what he does, it makes more bullshit for the rest of us to have to mop up. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I, I would just like to uh, give this my uh, like an analogy. Even if you were right, and let's say he was, he, he, all of his arguments against the idea of God were sound, and the sp flying spaghetti monster analogy was uh, accurate. Even then, the way he's going about it by being insulting like that. I mean, I, if I was doing like a complicated math equation, and I'm way off. What is the person going to say in order to get my attention? Hey, do you mind if I uh, help you with that equation? I, I think you're off. Or you go up to them and say, hey, you know, hey, you know, but you look full of shit with that one. I mean, uh, you really think it? You stupid retard. Let me help you with that. The guy's going to say, get the fuck away from me. It's not like, you know, I mean, come on. Yeah.
the thing is, you can make anything sound ridiculous. Like, um, I mean, you could say, um, I mean, I could say, I'm like, oh, atheist, you believe that uh, that nothing magically exploded and then turned into self replicating parts, turned into dinosaurs, and turned into flying rat, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is completely absurd. <laughs> spiritual theory on you know the existence of God I mean I've been reading the case for faith by these people even that shows Lee Strobel's uh, uh, move from atheism to theism as, in, as, in, as something that happened it had occurred in multiple stages so exactly and, and the arguments yes. presented well, by well, natural so theology are arguments for specific attributes and the cosmological arguments are primarily completely zero that there is either an explanation of the universe that it is uh, its own explanation, or uh, that there is some kind of cause which is outside of the space-time continuum, which we haven't. But there is no... It would seem very, very ad hoc if we would create an argument which will um, uh, go from, uh, from, from doubt of one's existence to the Christian God. I think that that would would it even be impossible to grasp for this uh, majority of people? Okay. I think we're going to move on. Like to the Wait, all right. Daniel, are you... Are you okay, last okay, does anybody have anything else? Because I think we need to move on to all three now. One, one more thing. Oh. And, and, and just because I noticed this, and maybe it's because I've seen a couple of videos, but I seem to equivocate the way that this guy's presenting arguments almost, to, almost to, you know, on the level of bionic dance. I mean, it, it, yes, it's not like that far to describe his arguments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I just well, felt that. Well, let's just go on. Okay, yeah, but, then, before we move okay, on to part two, three. Bionic Dance is just playing fucking retarded. Okay. Okay, this, can we can just, just move on? One last like, thing. Every, yeah, we'll stop with those. Okay, Come does on. anybody have anything else else to say, to say on this video? Yeah, can I? I'm good. Guys, yeah, I think we should move on now. Okay, hold uh, on. I think, guys, guys, I think Mike wants to say something. Oh. He's trying to say something. All right, let Mike say one. Let let Mike have the last word on this video. Then we're we're gonna move on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll just jump in one last thing, just really, really quickly. I, I think we ought to set him the challenge that he did say that he thinks the flying spaghetti monster is a a good analogy. He called it that. A good analogy to the hypothesis of God. So the challenge that he needs to be set is that if it is a good analogy, then he has to prove it's not a category error. Hold he on. has to show that it's an equal footing. And Hold unfortunately, on. The, it, the supposed idiot, William Lane Craig, a, along with a lot of other philosophers, have already demonstrated that the flying spaghetti monster hypothesis is a category error. It wouldn't be a good contention for, say, being uh, a candidate for a first cause. So that, that's the challenge he needs to meet. Alright. Is that all, everyone? Yeah. Alright, okay. I'm going to stop, stop the recording now.